Now let's do an example that really shows the superposition principle in action. So for this, we're looking at particle in a box wave functions, that psi n of x, depending on some integer n, equals the square root of 2 over l length of the box times sine n pi x over l. So we have some plots over here going from 0 to L where the wave function is constrained to be non-zero. It's zero outside of this where the potential is infinite. We have uh, psi 1 graphed in orange just goes up and down. Psi 2 where n equals 2 goes up and then down back up. And uh, what also the other convenient choice I've chosen for our wave function below, psi 5 goes up and down uh, uh, five times over the course of the entire box. And also importantly, the energy of each of these individual eigenfunctions is Planck's constant squared times the integer n squared over 8 times mass of the particle and length of the box squared. So whatever particle we're talking about, we have to pick a mass. Whatever uh, box we're talking about, we have to pick a width for it. But everything else uh, is pretty much uh, said in this description. So according to the superposition principle, we can write any general wave function, any general psi of x, as a co linear combination of these individual states. So here I've written down that I have the normalization constant on the outside, but I have this coefficient square root of 1 over 2 uh, times sine pi x over l t plus 1 half sine 2 pi x over l, so this one's in psi 2 plus 1 half sine 5 pi x over L. So rewriting this uh, in terms of the individual eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian, I have square root of 1 half psi 1 plus 1 half psi 2 plus 1 half psi 5. So we can see this is a form which is very resemblant to the type of uh, linear combination we've been looking at in the previous two videos. So if we want to calculate the expectation value for the energy of this wave function, here's how we go about doing that. We have our typical E here. And we showed in the previous video that when we have a superposition of states like this, that you can derive that that ends up becoming just a sum from n equals 1 to infinity of the coefficient in front, uh, the absolute magnitude of it squared, because in general it can be complex. All the ones I chose here were real, they have no imaginary part, but in general it's complex. That coefficient squared times the energy of that nth eigenvalue there. So writing that in terms of these individual wave functions, I have the expectation value of E equals square root of 1 over 2 squared. And you'll often see these coefficients with a square root in front of them because they have to be normalized, so the sum of their squares has to equal 1. Let me just write that here. So we have to have 1 equals the sum of n equals 1 to infinity of cn star cn, which is the same as absolute magnitude cn squared, complex conjugate. This is the normalization constant we, the normalization condition we have when we have in general a superposition of states. And you'll show that if you do psi star psi and integrate from minus infinity to infinity with respect to x, that you will in fact get one if you have a wave function in this form and this normalization condition is met. Okay, so we have our expectation value, plugging in this formula down here, we have the square root of 1 over 2 uh, squared, and you'll generally see them in square roots for this reason, times the energy of state 1, which we're going to get from this formula, plus 1 half squared e2, energy of the second eigen function plus one-half squared times the energy of the fifth eigenfunction. So the constants 
for e for psi 3 and psi 4 are 0, and the constant for every eigenfunction above psi 6 I have chosen to be 0 as well. So this sum from n equals 1 to infinity needs to be done in, in principle, but not always in practice, because in practice a lot of these coefficients are just going to be set equal to 0. Okay, so we have this case. Then we can start plugging in uh, more specific values. We'll have this becomes 1 half. E1 is going to be h squared, n squared is 1, over 8 ml squared, plus 1 half squared is 4. E2 is h squared 4, which is 2 squared, over 8 ml squared, plus 1 half, one half squared again, 1 fourth. We have 25h squared this time from E5, n equals 5, over 8 ml squared. Then going to the next line, let's just go ahead and factor out this nice little uh, h squared over 8 ml squared, which exists within all of these, which I've conveniently left in that form. So this times the quantity. And we have 1 half times, there's just a 1 here once you factor this out, plus 1 fourth times 4, the 2 squared, once you factor out this quantity. It's 4. Sorry, that's a 1 fourth. Go back to that. Plus 1 fourth. Sorry, 4. Ah, really struggling. Okay. I think we got it now. 1 fourth times 4. Okay. Plus, and we've got 1 fourth times 25. Okay, and then close the final parentheses. Uh, and then from this point on, we're just doing algebra. We have h squared over 8 ml squared. Well, really just arithmetic here. All right, that becomes a 1 half plus the 1 fourth over 4 just becomes a 1 plus the 25 over 4 becomes 25 fourths. Okay, so this, so 1 half plus 1 plus 25 fourths, this becomes 6 fourths. This all becomes 30, this all becomes 31 over 4. And then at the end, multiplying the 31 over 4 by this 1 over 8, we are going to get our final result that the expectation value of the energy is 31 h squared over 32 8 ml squared. It's our final answer. Okay, but then that's just the expectation value. That's the average. If we took, if we had a system in this state and we were to measure the energy of a million systems, which were all in this state, this is the number we would get on average. Now, this, so this is just an average, but what values can we get if we actually make the measurement? So if we actually measure the energy, we would only get certain measured values. According to postulate 3, the only values we can get are the eigenvalues of the Hamiltonian. So, and we'll see that we can measure it, we can measure the particle and get that it's in state 1, and that'll give us an energy of h squared over 8 ml squared. We could measure it and it's in state 2, and we can get an energy of 4 h squared over 8 ml squared. We can measure the we can measure the energy and get the energy of state 5, which is 25 h squared over 8 ml squared. So if you if you're asked what are the values of energy you could measure, since this has contributions from state 1, state 2, and state 5, the energies you can measure are the energies of of energy 1, energy 2, and energy 5. But then what are the probabilities of measuring each, each uh, value? Well, we said in the previous video that the probability from, we just inferred, that that is equal to 
for the, measuring the nth uh, eigenvalue, the eigenvalue of the nth state, is equal to the complex conjugate of that coefficient times itself, or this absolute magnitude squared that we were talking about here. So the coefficient for state 1 was square root of 1 over 2. So there is, for the probabilities, in purple here, there is going to be a 1 half probability that we measure the energy h squared over 8 ml squared because square root of 1 half squared is 1 half. And then there's going to be a 1 fourth probability that we measure this energy because we had 1 half squared is 1 fourth. And there's finally a 1 fourth probability that we measure energy 5, the energy of the fifth eigenfunction, 25h squared over 8 ml squared. And you'll notice that these probabilities do in fact sum up to 1. And that is the case because they are normalized and those probabilities do have to sum to 1. And because every other coefficient is 0, the probability of measuring some other energy is 0. So these are all the possible energies we can, we can measure. They have these probabilities. And because they have these probabilities, the weighted average of them becomes this expectation value, E, here. So this is an example of how the superposition principle works in practice for uh, what values you can possibly measure, how likely they are, and what the average will be of a large number of measurements of similar systems.